Hey, Rose, want to grab a drink? Your happiest hour of the week starts now. Sit back, relax, and enjoy because Because the the drinks drinks are are on us. us. (laughs) Welcome back to Drinks on Us. I'm Riley. And I'm Rose. We are so happy you joined us for happy hour. You guys, we have such a fun episode, a much requested guest, hot off the press. We have Miss Kendall K. Vertez coming on to the podcast. I'm so excited to chat with her. She is so unhinged. Like I can only imagine the conversations that we're going to have. She's the best. I love her energy. I think she's going to bring... I'm excited to ask her things maybe that other people wouldn't ask her, especially Mm -hmm. Dance Months Reunions coming up and she's hot off a national title champion. So I'm excited to get into the conversation. I think it's a much anticipated guest for the Do Crew. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm excited to get into it. But of course, we got to do our little Rose and Rye uh, catch up, even though everyone's probably like, just get Kendall on the pod right now. So we'll let's be honest. Yeah. No one cares about our catch up. (laughs) No one does. So let's keep it brief because remember that it's not all about us. Um, It's just hard for us to grasp sometimes. I know. What's in your cup tonight, Ray? Tonight I'm drinking a poppy strawberry lemon, which it was the last one left in the fridge. And I'm feeling kind of dangerous because I always save it for Cade, but he's not home. So I was like, I'm just going to drink this one. It's a favorite. I was going to say you're lucking out that at... The benefits of long distance right now are that Riley gets strawberry lemon poppy. You're right. I won't get it when we're not doing long distance. I can say goodbye to that flavor. You can say goodbye. I'm actually also drinking poppy. Oh, it looks like um, a purple one. Grape. Oh, I have. I, I feel like grape doesn't get the love it deserves. It gets kind of overshadowed. It really doesn't. It's not in like any, it's not a popular one. Like I feel like I, I got this in a PR package and it's probably one of my top three flavors. It's very nostalgic, spot on to grape. Crowd favorite for me. Crowd favorite. Yum. Well, cheers. Us cheers, poppy Ryan. girls. Yeah. Yours is elevated. My, I feel like I've been boring with my poppy lately, but it just hits. It hit, I know we drink poppy every time, except I did have kombucha last week, but poppy oh, is yeah. just, it's so good. No, it is so good. And it's perfect time to have it. I like to enjoy it and romanticize when I have my poppies. So I'm like, Oh, I might as well have it on the pod. Yeah. Well, how was your weekend? It was good. Um, another weekend here. So claps for me. Yay. Um, what the heck did I do? You're so tan. I feel like you were outside. I was. I went on the boat. That's what I did. I went on the boat and I got some sun. I think I got the perfect amount of color. You know, when you're just not quite sure when you're on the boat, how mm-hmm. if you take it too far. I think I I covered up at the very end because I, I just felt that feeling like, oh, I'm getting a lot of sun and I hate being burnt. Mm-hmm. So Ryan and I's goal is like at least one day every weekend to be in the sun. So it's like, we don't peel and Mm -hmm. lose it and have to start over. So we enjoyed a nice boat day on Saturday and just kind of hung out. Oh, I have exciting news. What? Our slab was bored. (gasps) Oh my God. Wait, you know, once that starts, like it starts going by really fast. That's what I am like leading myself to believe. Um, So I'm hoping that things continue to progress, but we got to like walk on our house in our house for the first time. Obviously, you know, it's just cement, but it's the little things right now. Oh my gosh. No, that gives me butterflies. I'm so excited for you. And I feel like every time you go now, there's going to be a little more and yeah. it's coming. It's coming along. It's coming. Yeah. So that's really it. The extent of my weekend. What about you? Well, it sounded like the perfect weekend. It was a good one. Um, my weekend was spent traveling, um, home from Indy. I went to Ohio for my sister-in-law's baby shower. My mom came with me and it was a two and a half Aww. hour ride there and back. And I wanted to tell you that I texted you for that branch basics podcast because I made her listen to it. What did she and think? She, I don't know. I feel like she was kind of into it, but also she was also like, all right, can we turn this off? Just because <gasps> she is a very like, she uses Windex. She like, and I'm yeah. trying to expose her to like the clean, the benefits of a clean lifestyle. So I think I planted the seed. Like it was very interesting, but at the same time, I don't know if she's to the point where she's going to throw out the Windex just yet. 
they really attack the the people who are like emotionally attached to their Windex and 409. So I'm yeah. sure she wasn't loving that. Well, no, but I think it was good for her to hear it. Like, yeah, I feel like we as people who are, are have that knowledge of like the toxins and how bad they mm-hmm. are, the only thing we can do is like expose people to that knowledge. Yeah. And then from there, it's up to them. Lead so, the yeah, horse to the her... water, but can't make her drink it. Or, oh, isn't that the saying? Oh my gosh, I love that saying. I forgot yeah. about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, good. I'm glad. And did you order your Branch Basic Starter Kit? I did, and I used your special code. What, did you get it yet? I got it. And actually, after we wrap filming, I'm going to wipe my whole house down with Branch Basics. I'm so excited. Oh, right. You got a report back. Also, did you get the plastic or glass trial? Okay. Kit? So I ended up getting plastic. That's Okay. I think because it was cheaper it and I was cheaper. also just like, I mean, I don't care glass or plastic. They're I still think it'll cute. work the same. Yeah. So what else did you do? So you went to Leah's baby shower. Um, yeah. Is that, and you drove home Friday from Indy. So you're reporting live again from Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah. So I'm in Pittsburgh this week. I'll probably be in Indy next week. It's just going to be like back and forth, but it's nice that I can just take my life on the road. You know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, no, I think it's, and the drive doesn't seem to be anything that is like tarnishing you wanting to live the back in life, back and forth life. No, it's not terrible. I mean, it's not like around the corner. It's just under six hours, but it's doable. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, that's as a baseball wife, I'm here to support. So I'm going to do what I can. It's definitely tough, um, but I'm glad that I can make it work. Absolutely. So um, I have to just call myself out because I, I'm, I'm letting the Duke crew down. Why? I told them and I told you that I would listen to Taylor's album to report <gasps> and I haven't yet. I know. I know. It's really bad. You can yell at me. It's fine. No, I'm not going to yell at you, but cause I know you're busy and it is a lot. It's overwhelming cause there's a lot of songs. So I totally yeah. understand. I just, I, I just have to be in the right like state of mind to listen and absorb it all. And, and Mm -hmm. I will be honest, the double album, like almost was too much for me that I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm, when am I going to find the time to listen to 31 songs? Like you had a great, nice drive. And when I'm in the car with Ryan, I'm sorry, he does not want to listen to Taylor Swift. So I'm like, when can I, I'm going to start to listen back and forth from like my workouts and errands this week. I'll give you some top, Okay. Like some early favorites to start with um, to ease you into it. Cause there are a couple really upbeat, like fun ones. Okay. And then there are a lot that are like more deep and they're on the slower side and you have to listen to them like twice to be like, Oh my gosh, like I love this song. The lyrics are amazing. And that's how all of Taylor's. Yeah. Well, that's how most of Taylor's music is. It's like, Slow it's burn. so deep that sometimes it goes over my head and then you listen a couple more times and you're like, wait, I'm actually in love with this slow song. Mm-hmm. So I'll send you some ones to like ease you into it on your way home from workouts. Well, why don't you share with the, the class? Okay. So I can do it with a broken heart. Listen to that one first. It's so good. Okay. It's like upbeat, um, down bad. Another great one. Super okay. fun, upbeat. Her one with Post Malone, Fortnite. It's good. It's a little slower, but I really like that one. Okay. Um, what about oh, Florida? The, oh, Florida with Florence and the Machine. Another favorite. Okay. I, I do love that one. It's really fun. And then, wait, I need to pull up my Spotify because this okay. one, I'm going to get you back, I think is what it's called. Or wait. Ooh, fun. Hold on. It's called, oh, The Alchemy is about Travis. Ooh, is it good? Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> I, I think I've seen people posting about that one. Um, shoot, I can't find. Oh, thank you, Amy. Is about Kim K. Savage. I, I did hear like, I haven't listened to it, but I've heard about the spelling of the title and everything. It is like, you have to listen to it. It's Taylor went savage mode. What like it's heck? not subtle at all. That is I'm going to get you back is a good one. Um, Ooh, it's fun. like one of the slower ones, but it's just, you have to listen through over mm-hmm. and over. And I think your point to your point about the lyrics and like really taking the time to listen, I'd say my favorite way to listen is when I can actually like see the lyrics or watch something because 
when you're like listening in a place where you're not observing the lyrics, it is hard to appreciate her music on the surface. I agree. I saw this tweet. It was so funny. It was like from supposed to be from Travis's point of view. It was like, I haven't seen this many words since high school. (laughs) She's just so wordy and like she is. Yeah. She's a genius and she's so talented. What lover or hater, you can't take that away. So I'm going to listen. I promise I will, but it's just, it's a lot to take in 31 songs. Is that how many are on there? That's a lot. I think like around that. Yeah, it's a lot for sure. But are you happy with it? Yeah, I am. I think that she, like you said, is just a genius. And Mm -hmm. I am, some people will say it's very slow, but you just have to like get in the, like you said, get in the mindset and really dive into the lyrics and you will love it. I, um, someone, I forget who said this. So I would love to hear if you think it's like accurate that maybe she, put out almost two albums in one because it's such a past life for her that she kind of wanted to like get it out and move on to like this Mm -hmm. new era she's in. Do you think that has to do with the double album? Um, Probably. I mean, there are a lot of them that are so clearly about Joe Mm -hmm. and um, what's the Matt? Wait, what's the other? Oh yeah. Matt. um, Maddie. Maddie Maddie Haley Haley or Healy or something. Yeah. There's a lot that are so clearly about them and it's just like, Oh, so it's just crazy. You have to listen and okay. then we can chat. Okay. Yay. Um, okay. Well, is there anything else that you want to chit chat or update the do crew on? No, not necessarily. Should we get into us in our cart? Yes. Before we do, I forgot to even say like, how was Leah shower? It looked darling. Oh, it was, that was a perfect word. It was so darling. She looks amazing. She's so freaking cute. Mm-hmm. And Shane, her husband actually came for like the end part and they're just so sweet together. And like seeing them and imagining them as parents is just such like, it made my heart so happy. Oh, and they're due what month? June. Okay. So soon, very soon. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for them. I'm so happy for them. So the next time you'll see them most likely will be when they have a child. I think I might see them one more time before then. But it is crazy, like, at this stage in our lives, which I'm sure you can relate, Rose, like, being at a baby shower with, like, friends and family, it's like, everyone's asking you, so you're next? Like, when is it your turn? And I'm just like, not yet. I know. I know. Uh, Trust me. That's the one thing. Yeah. It's especially now that Ryan and I, like, move closer to family, everyone thinks that is why, like, the, the sole reason why. And I'm like, just for one second, think about me and Ryan right now, like, our lives like we're not meant to have a child right now like it just doesn't make sense and you and Kate like oh it's so irking sometimes like of course we want families but I'll let you know when I, when we do thank yeah. you yeah it's just like I feel like it's such a normalized question and why <laughs> why we'll and also know. there's just you have no clue what's going on behind the scenes whether it be like you know, an unfortunate situation or just the timing's not right. Like, Mm -hmm. I think, can we like switch it to just like when we're pregnant and we want to tell you we will? Yeah. Thanks. Let's normalize not asking that question. Thank you. Okay. Anyways. All right. Now you can get into your cards. (laughs) Okay. So I wanted to talk about, um, my like travel slippers. You guys know I'm weird about like my feet touching the ground in a place that I'm I don't live in. Um, I need a new pair of slippers that I wear when I'm traveling, like with the hard okay. bottom. I saw these ones with like a Sherpa top. They're not UGG, but they kind of look like UGG. They're a little platform. Mm-hmm. And I might pull the trigger. I forget if I saw them on Revolve or some other website, but I'm going to link those because they're so cute. Were and they more cost effective than UGGs? I don't remember the cost. Yeah. I just remember being like, oh, those are so cute. I would wear them all the time. And now I'm like needing like my house slippers that I have that I travel with. I've worn them so much that I'm like, I need another pair. Yeah. Yeah. It's time. Okay. Yeah. Link them. There's nothing better than a nice new pair of slips. Yeah. I'll link them. I need like a sturdy pair. Mm -hmm. Um, And then what else did I want to talk about? Oh, so I've been using the drunk elephant bronze drops. Right. And I have to say, like, I was loving them because everyone else loved them. Mm-hmm. And they were all the rage. And I've come to terms that like they're all right, but they're nothing to write home about. Like it's 
it's okay. So I switched to, cause I ran out the L'Oreal like Lumi glow or something yes. is what it's called. It's like a moisturizing primer that also is illuminating and you can get different shades. So if you're, if you want like a little bronze, I really love it. I see so many people use it during get ready's with me and it always looks like an incredible product. It looks really moisturizing. I always think the junk elephants look so dry. Okay. That is so funny you say that because it is dry. So whenever I use Drunk Elephant, I have to use it with a moisturizer. Mm -hmm. And this L'Oreal Illumi Glow or whatever it's called, it's a two-in-one. So it's a glow product and moisturizer and primer. Yeah, it's great. I do it under foundation. That would be good for the summer. So I'm glad you're loving it. It's good to know like a firsthand review. I'll link it. Okay. And then the only other thing is I'm in the market for a matching pair of PJs that are shorts. Um, I have like skims that are long pants, but sometimes I I don't want to wear long pants to bed. And so I've had my eye on that brand in my Sundays, I think is what it's called. Yeah, I've seen that. Also, Eber J is a good brand. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what I'm going to pull the trigger on, but I'll link both of those brands because I think it'll be good quality. Yeah. While you're browsing, look at Tommy John too. Oh, Tommy John. You love Tommy John. I love their PJs. Okay. And they have like, you know, those like black or white ones with black polka dots that I have. I don't know if I've ever worn them around you. Yeah. Those are Tommy John and I love them. It's a long shirt, but it's shorts. Do you have a discount code? I feel like you do. No, I wish, but I definitely think there's influencers out there. Like just if you do, I'm almost positive um, this one influencer I know has one. So if you do go that route, let me know and I'll find her link. Okay. Thanks. Um, But yeah. And then uh, I was in like that season where I wanted them to, and I got like some nice ones and then I got like one or two that I actually really love from Target. Like if you just want more options um, or like shorts on shorts, you know, you can get some nice ones and some average does. Yeah, you're right. I feel like Target honestly probably has great ones too. Yeah, I love my Target ones just as much. Okay, good to know. Yay. Well, what's in your cart? So if you're watching YouTube, I wanted to um, shout out this cute little boutique sent me the shirt. And I it's like asymmetrical, which I feel like is... We love asymmetrical, don't you? I feel like we both love, do. Love. And I love that shirt. It's so flattering. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. I love covering the shoulder because there's nothing worse than feeling like your arm is just like that thick mama. (laughs) Um, So it's Shop Hazel and Poppy. I figured I'd give them a cute little shout out. Um, I I just feel like little boutiques have the cutest clothes. Like they're not Mm -hmm. all copy and paste. Um, I don't know if I can link it, but at least if you want to shop, you can check them out. Um, I wanted to say I'm still on the hunt and had to use... Um, every last drop of my shampoo and conditioner because oh, I cannot shoot. pull the trigger. I've been like, it's so hard because shampoo and conditioner is so personal. I mm-hmm. swear. Everyone that I like linked last week, some people love them. Some people absolutely shit on them. So I'm like, oh, which, really? one, which one do I pick? Um, so I'll let you know what I come up with. But in that hunt, I decided when I do pull the trigger, I'm going to get the necessary body wash. Okay. Let me know. I've seen um, like so much about that brand. Yes. They actually have a shampoo and conditioner. The reviews were yes and no, um, but I definitely am going to get the body wash. And there was another product I'll link. I think it forget. I don't know. Their products just really do something to me, their marketing Mm -hmm. or their branding I love. So I figured I'd link it because I love a good, clean luxe body wash just Mm -hmm. romanticizes your shower. So I'll link that. Um, and then I wanted to talk about, okay, so I gave up my OctaBuddy a little bit. It was just like driving me nuts, like yeah. sticking to everything. It was making everything so like those circles were everywhere yeah. in my life. <laughs> Have you seen the new version where it's basically like uh, it sticks onto your phone when you want to use it? So you like keep it in your purse. No. So it's like kind of an updated version where it's like if you want to have it, you pull it out and like, um, and it just hits right to your phone and then you can stick it on. It's the same brand. It's just kind of like the 2.0 version. So I think I'm going to get it. I think you should get it. I think I'm 100% every, getting it. But every person who is an influencer or likes to take content, don't have to be an influencer, like should get it. I think 
it's going to save us. My is so annoying. It sticks to everything. It was so funny. We went out to dinner with um, another couple from the team and uh-huh. the wife has a young baby and she was obsessed with my Octobuddy. Like was wanted she? to just hold my phone and play with it. Ooh. And it just made me think like, one, this thing is probably so, like our phones are so dirty. Oh my gosh. That is one thing too. Like my Octobuddy, I'm like, this thing is grabbing every yeah. dirt particle. So I, um, I think I'm going to snag the other one. I, I literally think it's under $10. So okay, I'm I'll link, link it. I'm going to yeah. um, click your link. Okay. And then the last thing, it's kind of inspired by your pajama. I was just doing like my self-care routine the other day and I'm obsessed. Have you ever heard of the brand Mason Gray? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. So it's just like kind of like a luxury bamboo kind of pajama um, robe company. And I have one of their robes and it's one of my go-to things to get, uh, expecting mother because I feel like a robe is like a perfect thing to have when you're in the thick of postpartum, or at least I'd like to believe (laughs) I haven't been there. Um, and I just love a good, nice robe. They have the cutest patterns. And so if you're in the market, mother's day is around the corner. I thought it'd be a good gift for Mm -hmm. moms. I'm going to link it because I love mine and it's like just that buttery material and they have the cutest patterns. So that was just like a random thing that came to mind for me. I love that. I actually need a new robe. Every time I put, go to put on my robe, I'm like, I should really get a new one. I've just had it for so long. It's like, it's really thick too. I think I need a thinner material. So I'm going to look it up. Yeah, you should. They actually, Rye might have jammies too. Oh, perfect. Two and one. Two and one. Maybe they'll um, discount code if you spend a certain amount. Um, but yeah, I used to have like the thick ones too. And it just it, it's just not feasible here. So I'm like, I need yeah. a nice robe that doesn't... Especially with the impressions mirror that we have. So hot. Oh my gosh. I'm like sweating my ass off getting ready. I'm like, this <laughs> yeah. is counterintuitive here. Yes. This, this isn't the vibe. So... Um, I was just loving it the other day. I'm like, I need to talk about this on the pod. So figured I'd mention. I'm glad you did. That's it. Okay. Well, should we go get our guest? Yes. I'm excited. Me too. Before we bring Kendall on, we want to let you guys know that this episode is brought to you by Trumi. Elevate your wellness routine with Trumi's super powered mushrooms. We love the benefits of Trumi's functional mushroom gummies. They are formulated with a curated selection of natural ingredients for superior wellness benefits. Trumi offers a wide range of gummies, including sleep, shine, focus, calm, and more. My personal current favorite gummies are calm as my life can get super chaotic this time of year, and they really just help me handle the chaos. So we've worked out a special offer for our audience. Receive 30% off of your Trumi order. Go to Trumi.com and enter code DO30 at checkout for 30% off. You don't even have to be a brand new customer. You can use this code every time you order Trumi. That's T-R-O-O-M-Y.com and enter code D-O-U-30. Today, we are sitting down with Kendall Vertez, who you may know from reality television, but she is also my little sister. Hi, Kendall. Hey guys. Thanks for having I'm me I'm so on. excited you're on. I know. Um, I think this has been a highly requested guest, right? Wouldn't you agree? Oh my gosh, Kendall, you're like a hot commodity for the Do Crew. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Kendall, we all, we talk about you sometimes and we sometimes hope you don't listen because sometimes, well, we'll, we'll leave, we'll leave it out, but we, we, we talk about, we can, we frequent Kendall on the pod, don't we, Rye? Yes. You, I, if you're listening and you're a frequent listener, you know, the inside joke and <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. What's the inside joke? Um... <laughs> I think I take it as the most controversial sister. I'll take that role. We're not, it's not something about you. It's something yeah. about It's not me. what you'd expect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, different. before we get into all the good stuff, Kendall, we always have to ask what's in your cup today. Oh, tonight. tonight is my coffee because I do have some studying to get to after. I get a grande shaken espresso with no classic syrup, sugar-free vanilla, a pump of chai, and oat milk. Sounds really good. It is yummy, yeah. but it gives me headaches, so I have to, I have to drink it slow. How do you come up with that combo? Okay, I used to be a huge Dunkin' girl, but their drinks were so sugary, and so I need, mm-hmm. but I still needed coffee, so I 
found out that they had like sugar-free vanilla and they had healthy recipes. And so, cause I don't really like lattes. They're too milky for me. So I got like a, a nice strong espresso drink. I'm going to have to try that. It's yeah. good. I love chai, but chai is so like sugary. Mm-hmm. I still get it. It's a lot. It's so right. It's so funny. Cause we went through the same progression. Yeah. Except Kendall, you're a little bit like advanced. So in our college <laughs> days, Rose, we were still obsessed with Duncan. True. Um, and I don't know when we stopped being obsessed, maybe after college when we were like, wait, this is like straight sugar. I feel like towards our senior year, we thought we like elevated to Starbucks. Oh yeah. You guys ran on Duncan. You literally were Duncan for Halloween one year. Mom <laughs> yeah. always to this day, anytime I call her, like, oh, can you look at our old dance costumes? She's like, why don't you just be Duncan, like Ryan Rose? I'm like, because that <laughs> like, was in 2016, mom. <laughs> like you're saying for Halloween when you're like, yeah. I want to wear an old dance costume. That's like the best part about being a dancer is you can literally just use your old dance costumes. Seriously. That's so too bad true. you couldn't fit into. I always used, were you guys still at Studio 19 with the race car production number? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That was my go-to, like, when in doubt, race car driver. Yeah. That outfit always came in clutch for Halloween. I almost wore the little bird costume with, like, the pink. It was the hot pink boa with the... With the feathers. With the feathers. I loved that costume, but people didn't... That would be cute. People wouldn't really know what I would be. Yeah. True. Well, we have a great episode planned out today. KK, we're just going to ask you some Q&A questions and see where the combo takes us. So do you want to get started with question number one? Of course. Okay. I think this is the question on everybody's lips right now. So Kendall, what can we expect from the Dance Moms reunion? Um, I think a lot of people are expecting drama which obviously makes sense after watching Dance Moms, but this was more for us to kind of get closure on things that we weren't old enough to really talk about. Because if you remember, we were all 13 and 14 and 15 when the show ended. So like we didn't really have our voices at the time. And so a lot of the girls who actually haven't even met, like Kalani has never met, um, or no, Paige and Brooke have never met JoJo because they were on, on such different seasons. So like wow, it was a reunion for us to kind of get to know each other and talk about our experiences, but also Kalani came and she was the reason Paige and Brooke left, but they never got to talk about that because there was kind of two sides of that story. And so a lot of the reunion was kind of just not hashing things out, but just like tying up loose ends with each other and, just reflecting on the memories, the good and the bad, because we were so young when it aired. I feel like it's going to be kind of emotional. Like, was it, were you getting teary eyed? I think we cried in every segment, whether it was all of us together or if it was just Chloe, like obviously seeing your best friends cry about something that you all experienced. It's hard Mm -hmm. to just sit there and be like, why are you crying? Cause we all went through the same stuff And like each girl had their own segment. Like mine was kind of based off of how I cried a lot. And I'm sitting here crying, watching myself crying. But like each girl kind of had their own like moment. Like Chloe's was um, when Abby would pin her up against Maddie and all of that drama. So it's just hard to like watch the stuff that you went through because we blocked it out. So Right. Yeah. Like, do you feel like going there and reliving it was... Like, was it triggering or do you feel like it was healing? I think a little bit of both. A lot of the clips that they would show us, I either didn't know that that happened or I forgot about it. So it was like, oh, like, I forgot that even happened. But some of the clips I was like, yeah, I don't really want to watch this, but I've never fully accepted that it happened. So like, I guess now's a good time to tie up that loose end and get all of my emotions out. It was so crazy. Yeah. The thing about reality TV, we talked about this um, with another guest who was just on is like, you have to live it. And then once it airs, you have to relive it. And now in this case with the reunion, you have to relive it again. What? 10 years later. It's just like, it's wild. What? I don't think anyone really understands like how mentally tough you girls are. And like you are bonded in a way that no one will ever understand. Yeah. I think the hardest part about it 
because obviously I was so excited to see the girls and like be together again or for the first time it ended so long ago. And so all of those memories, the good and the bad were kind of just like let go shoved down deep down. And then we had to re bring them back up and re go through everything that we went through. Mm -hmm. I think that was the hardest part. And we were physically and mentally drained after days of filming and like the tensions were high. We were exhausted. It was a lot to go through, but I'm really glad that we did it. And I really hope that the viewers can see that as us finally showing our true personalities. And we're all adults now. They didn't see us as adults. We were literally children. And so I'm happy that we did this because now they can kind of see our take on a fight or a dance that we did and like hear what we have to say about it because we never got to do that. Mm-hmm. and like see you guys beyond who they fell in love with on the show because you guys are such different people now and I think yeah they hold you to like who you were as these eight nine ten eleven twelve year olds and I think it's a good like a nice way for you guys to kind of share your voice and hopefully people can see beyond you guys through like the lines of a reality tv show which we all know is far yeah. from reality yeah a lot of people always think that they know who we are just from what they saw on television. And I'm like, that's 25% of who I am. I cried every episode. I'm not (laughs) going to just cry every day of my life. Like you, you only got such a small amount of who we are as people and dancers and social media. They kind of get a little bit of that, but not even because I do like to keep some of my life private, but at the same time, people have been invested in my life since I was eight years old. So it'd be weird to not share everything with everybody. I think you do a really good job of sharing and like not sharing and just, I mean, it's tough to be in the public eye and everyone has an opinion. So yeah, yeah, I'm proud of you for handling that. Thanks. So the next question, I mean, you kind of already answered it, but what was the experience like being back with the girls filming? What kind of emotions did that bring up? You kind of answered it, but what was that like? Um, Well, when we first found out there was going to be a reunion, I remember calling mom. I'm like, there's no way this is actually happening. We all are in different states, all on different schedules. We haven't even been in the same room together in years. Like this is going to take years of planning. And we finally get to California. We had a little birthday party for Paige the night before we filmed at Maddie's house. And that was just so, it was like a breath of fresh air. Like for the amount of years that we all didn't keep in contact for us to finally be in a room with Maddie, Mackenzie, Melissa, Nia, Holly, it felt like we never left. Like Mm -hmm. picked up right where we left off. And I think that explains perfectly of how much of a bond and how different of a bond we have than other friendships that we've gone through. Um, We basically went through trauma together and so many life experiences that we'll never forget And so that was definitely good to have. Um, But filming the reunion, I mean, obviously, like reopening all of those memories and bringing them back up was definitely tough. But we were all in it together. Like if Mm -hmm. one person was crying, we were all crying. If one person was laughing, we were all laughing. So it's nice to be with the people that you have been through the most with just because they understand where you're coming from. Mm hmm. And the experiences, like even your childhood, like it's probably so hard to even like even Riley can't understand what it was like to just not within the show, but also what happened outside the show that was compromised because of the life you were living. So I'm sure that it's just like you said, there's just Riley and I talk about all the time, even dancing. I feel like dancer bonds are different than like school friends. And I can't imagine to the level of a reality show to that. Le- like that degree like right can yeah. you even imagine no I mean Kendall you were like eight years old walking red carpets flying across <laughs> the world going to Ireland like it's just absolutely nuts so I feel like to your point like there's pros there's amazing things that you got out of it but also like the trauma and the emotions and it's like was not a normal childhood in the slightest yeah. yeah I think the biggest thing about it was the fact that mom had to leave you and Charlotte and dad Like I had my own stuff to deal with, with like the pressure and the stress. And obviously she had a lot of pressure and stress, but she also had 75 percent, 80% of her family back at home. Mm -hmm. And wall, mom, (laughs) Charlotte, like we had to literally 
pack up our things and move to California for three plus years. That was so hard on her. And I missed school. <laughs> I, <didn't laughs> in school so I didn't get any social life out of it. Yeah. Well, hey, look at you now. You're going to be getting a college degree. It yeah. all worked out. <laughs> Yeah, miss, miss seriously, algebra, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> At least you have the social skills, just maybe not the algebra skills, but no. it's okay. Riley and I don't have those either. So you didn't miss out on anything. No, I literally <laughs> went to school full time and still don't have algebra skills. So Kendall, you'll be fine. Yep. Bank it on that. <laughs> okay. Um, next question. Do you feel that your experience on Dance Moms prepared you for the cutthroat dance team environment? Um, it definitely prepared me to have a coach whether she's a good coach, a bad coach. Um, I think being with the same group of girls for seven plus years, dancing every single day, day in and out, definitely prepared me on relationships and teamwork and being mm -hmm. and trying to dance as one. I think that prepared me the most. Um, but college dance team is really different from competitive dance, which is what we are obviously used to. And you guys also got to see both sides and lived mm -hmm. through both worlds. And it's just different. You have an entire university on your back, basically, that you're representing on top of all of the other universities that are also at the same competition. So the pressure is different, um, but it's the same, if that makes sense. Like with Dance Moms, I just treated it as a normal dance competition with a camera in front of me. Like I didn't mm -hmm. let that affect me, but with dance team, like standing in the wings before you walk on that stage is something you will never have to go through ever again in your life. It is the most stressful minute of your life watching <laughs> that team walk off the stage. And you're like, all right, it's us next. Like here we are. It is. Oh, I'm so glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what's different with dance competitions versus dance team is like, you have how many competitions a year? Like you're competing these dances over and over and over again with your dance studio. Whereas dance team in college, there's one competition it's nationals mm -hmm. and you get one chance. Like you don't get to like, Oh, we always have next time. Like, no, it's you prepare all year for that one competition. And so I feel like that makes it like the stakes are so much higher. Yeah, for sure. We, you're right. It's literally three months of preparation for a two minute dance that you may only get to do once. Yeah. And I think that's the that's biggest so crazy. I think too, at least with Louisville and I'm sure JMU is the same. I feel like competitive dance is not as strict on like everybody needs to look like one person and the lines and the formations. I feel like it was more fluid. Like everyone danced a little bit different in competitions. You could kind of see everyone's unique style. And I feel like in dance team, it's like, the goal is to look like it's one person 20 times on yeah. the floor, which is adjust an adjustment to competition life. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, kind of going off of that, um, how did competing at NDA compare to competing in dance competitions growing up? Which, by the way, do you want to tell everyone you're a national champion? Woo! Do you want a national Woo! champion in POM? I loved so your POM routine. It was so, so much good. fun. Um, I mean, we kind of just said dancing at dance competitions, like obviously the main goal is to dance as one, but it's different because there's not like a, you don't have categories that you're getting judged off of. They just judge you off of, mm -hmm. Oh, like her jumps were pretty, her tricks were good. The turns looked good with NDA. There's unity, there's difficulty. Like there's so many different categories that you get judged on. And I think that's the biggest difference. It's also you get one dance, like at dance competitions, how many dances were we in 15 to 20? Like <laughs> yeah. we had, I had four solos. You guys all had three <laughs> or four solos. You had duets, trios, small groups, large groups, productions. Yeah. Like yeah. you're on that stage all day with NDA nationals. However many dances your school brings, you're either dancing on that stage once or twice. Yeah. Yeah. It is so crazy. Why did we have that many dances? <laughs> It seems like excessive looking back. How did we remember all of those dances? I, that's what I'm saying. Like, no wonder we have no room for algebra in our brains. <laughs> yeah. And I still don't. <laughs> Gosh. So do you feel like winning college nationals was like a monumental win for you? Or do you think it kind of like leveled out to like a big win in your competition studio life? 
I, I mean, winning is winning. Like it's the best feeling in the world, especially I say winning for an NDA title, like beats out any other title that I've ever had in dance or competitions, just because like we said, the work you put into a two minute dance is insane. We have nine to six practices Saturday and Sunday. That's a full-time job for some people. And it's all for one dance. And if you make it past prelims, you get to do it twice. If you don't, you literally do it once, but Mm -hmm. the preparation, like their motto is the work is worth it. And we were like, Oh, like that's so cheesy, but it's true. Like (laughs) the amount of work that you put into these dances is what shows on that stage. And so the blood, the sweat, the tears, like it all is on that trophy. So yeah. Agreed. I thought it was so cute after prelims for Palm. You texted me and said, that was so much fun. Like (laughs) you work so hard to a point where like, it's kind of just muscle memory once you're on the stage and it is fun. Like you're, you prepared all year for this and like, finally you get to do it. So I love that you had fun. Yeah. I think the end goal was for us to just do what we've been doing for how many months and just to have fun with it. Cause it's not only for us. We want the audience to enjoy it as well. We want our parents to be proud. Obviously we want our coach to be proud, but we also want to make it look fun because our theme was party. It was like, like the song in our phone is JMU Palm party. Aww. And so like all the songs we picked for it, like it starts off with party people. So like, we just wanted to show the audience how much fun we were having while we were dying basically <laughs> <laughs> literally dying palm is a beast it's like a different oh my gosh it's, it's so tiring so hard <laughs> and you did a front aerial with palms in your hand at like the end of the yeah. dance yeah that's that so aerial, impressive uh, i got a permanent cankle from that one <laughs> <laughs> cankles run in the vertez fam <laughs> wait i was gonna say the same thing do, kendall do you know riley gets cankles every time she drinks actually well okay it's a combo it's not every time I drink it's every time I fly and then oh. drink. <laughs> yeah. oh. I, my body just gets the kinks yeah I've had a cankle <laughs> since I I developed it in LA when we were filming dance moms oh and I went to like a ballerina physical trainer just because she dealt with feet and it's like a sack of fluid that's just like attached to my Achilles that is constantly swollen and so I think I'm gonna get surgery on that this summer because like dancing on it on these hardwood basketball floors is not good and so landing that front aerial every day it would just like get fatter and fatter and fatter my jashu literally like my skin was (laughs) rolling over my (laughs) (laughs) jashu oh (laughs) we're getting graphic (laughs) I can just like I fear I just feel that like the thought of putting on a crusty moldy jashu like gives me a little PTSD. Oh my God. The stench (laughs) is no other. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, cankles aside, we want to know why you chose JMU for college. Um, this girl didn't even want to go to college, but yeah, mom forced me to go to school. God forbid. (laughs) Um, I originally wanted to go to Penn State, obviously, because our entire high school or maybe half the population of Penn Trafford <laughs> went to Penn State. And I didn't really have a lot of experience in school. And I finally like just got my group of friends and they all went to Penn State. So obviously I wanted to go to Penn State and I didn't get into the main main branch. Yeah, I didn't get into like the main university park. So I was like, well, shit, now what? But we have a lot of family that lives in the Virginia area and a lot of our cousins went to JMU. And so they were like, oh, why don't you go come down and tour the campus? It's gorgeous. It's not too far from home. And so mom, dad and I, we drove down one beautiful summer day (laughs) toward campus. And I was like, perfect. It has everything I need. Has a good dance team, good academics, beautiful campus. It is beautiful. Now I'm almost a senior. That's so crazy. That is so crazy. It looks really fun there. I feel like sports are on, like JMU is in their sports era. They Mm -hmm. really are. And we just got a new football coach, a new basketball coach, a new athletic director, a new president. It's like getting full glam right now. 
<laughs> okay, full glam. I love that for Jamie. We, I love Kendall. I hope I learn a few new of like the fun sayings because every time I'm around you, I learn. Wait, what did you used to say? Lowercase and uppercase. Oh, I like re- oh, she's walking in lowercase. Like if someone's walking really slow, <laughs> <laughs> they're getting full glam. I love that. I think Louisville is getting full glam too. Then I guess we really? can use that, right? Um, yeah. Louisville sports need a little makeover. <laughs> they need a facelift. Um, wait, I was going to ask you something. Oh, so you said you didn't want to go to college and then you went to college. How do you feel about your decision to go to college? Honestly, as much as I fought mom about having her force me to go to school, like I was not in my right mind because we just (laughs) came back from California and I didn't want to go back to high school. I was like, I'll stick with homeschooling. I want to live in California. I want to film movies and do music and do all of that. And Mm -hmm. she's like, you're back home, live a normal life, go to school, go to Friday night football games, get a group of friends, join an athletic team. So she made me join the golf, not made me. I joined the golf team, as we all know at PT. And I made my best friends for life going to school. And I saw all of them going to college. And so I was like, all right, I'll go to college. And I'm really glad that I'm here because now I have memories that I'll remember for a lifetime. I was able to join a dance team and also have all of those memories. We just won a national title. And it's something that everybody has to experience. Like you have to go to college. You only get four years of it and then it's over. Mm. And so it's crazy how fast it's gone, but I'm so glad that I ended up here. Me too. I'm glad because you, like you said, you could have stayed in LA and never got the experiences of like at least the semi normal life. I'm sure all your experiences are a little tainted since like <laughs> people recognize you a lot. But I'm pretty drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I still pop out of these frat parties. <laughs> Wait, I do have to say, Kendall's college experience, as like normal as you're trying to make it, it is so not normal. She just had an ABC film crew in her living room yesterday in her college dorm. I'm like, wait, <laughs> it was like so, so uncasual. We were filming like right on my porch where my front door is, but we have like other units connected to ours. And this girl like comes stumbling over into our neighbor's <laughs> house. And then literally she walks inside, starts screaming, like they're filming dance moms. Cause she saw like a big camera. And so the entire house <gasps> comes outside and they're like, what are you guys doing? And I'm like, Oh, I'm filming. And then they like went back inside and then some girl comes over hammered, like <laughs> eyes are basically closed, chomping on Mac and cheese. <laughs> comes into my house. She's like, Hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, Oh, I'm just filming something. She's like, you didn't come to my birthday party. I'm like, I don't know who you are. Like, who are you? <laughs> and she's like, well, do you want to hang out tomorrow? I'm like, Oh, maybe I'll let you know. And the film crew is like trying to pack up their stuff. I'm like, babe, babe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. But you're living a quote, normal life. <laughs> I told them yesterday in my interview, I was like, I feel like Hannah Montana a little bit. You like, totally I- are. I was in California, I was shooting Dance Moms, and then I came home to the suburbs, went to good old Penn Trafford. <laughs> Wait, it actually is kind of spot on. Yeah. I just need a wig. Pop out pop out in a blonde wig. I That's totally so forgot how you didn't want to go to high school and then like you just went to high school one day. Like that's so hard. Yeah, it was weird because I missed like <laughs> When I left, maybe it was fifth grade. Like I, I remember my friends now, my best friends now, they were like, you came to middle school for one day (laughs) and you sat next to me in study hall. And then I never saw you again. Like (laughs) I literally didn't go to middle school. So I didn't have any of those memories. And the last time I saw my friends, like they all went through puberty, like Mm -hmm. while I was gone. So when we came back, they were like, oh my God, I I didn't even recognize you. Like Cause obviously we were so much more mature and grown up and yeah, it was weird. It was hard. I was nervous. I was scared. Nobody was going to like me and they were going to think I was like some bitchy, like reality, yeah. star, but right. I'm just trying to go to high school and live a normal life for once. Mm-hmm. Love. Yeah, PT. that's so true. Gotta love it. So like while you're filming dance moms kind of, 
scaling back from going back to school in high school, um, did you struggle with loving dance through, you know, the filming of the, of dance moms and the trauma? And do you feel like college was when you regained your love for dance? I think my love for dance definitely ended after dance moms only because obviously I loved it and I loved it before dance moms. And like, we all danced at the same dance studio. Like that was when dance was everything that I ever wanted and everything that I ever loved. And when we were on dance moms, we didn't have a lot of say of the dances that we got to do. We also didn't have a lot of time to think about the dances and like Mm -hmm. truly understand what we were dancing about and why we were dancing. We would learn them in two days and then have to compete them and then forget them and learn a new dance. And that went on for seven years. And so it was really hard to show up and like have that same passion that I used Mm -hmm. to have about it because Mm -hmm. it felt so forced. And so once dance moms ended, I took a break. I didn't dance for like three or four years only because it was just too much. I did it for too long. It was too repetitive. I wanted a break. And then joining the dance team five or six years later, it like brought back so many good feelings about what dance should have been and what Mm -hmm. it can be. And it's awesome to be surrounded by the girls who also aspired to win a national title and love dance and had great memories dancing. And they kind of also brought back those great memories that I lost throughout the years. Yeah. I love that you got to end or you will get to end on like a positive note with dance. Cause I feel like every girl that was on dance moms stopped dancing after dance moms because it did yeah. like a, at least for a little bit. So it's, and a lot of them I, I could assume would never dance again. So it's cool that you get to, at least like when you look back years and years later, you're going to have like a good feeling about dance and not just have it kind of attached to dance moms. Yeah. I think the only girl who, I know Nia, I think she's graduating this semester of UCLA. She joined, mm-hmm. I want to say like their club dance team. Cause she was like, I don't, I'm done with competitive dancing. I was like, girl, I get it. And so she joined their club team. So they do like little showcases and recitals and stuff. But other than that, Kalani just teaches. She teaches at a dance studio in Arizona and she loves dance. Like Kalani mm-hmm. was born to dance. Yeah. And she, I was like, why don't you open up your own studio? She's like, I'm thinking about it. So I think she'll be a dance teacher and she'll be teaching dance until the day she dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we <laughs> gave justice to JoJo in our last episode. As her friend, how do you feel about her new era? Well, first off, I mean, a girl with that much hate and that much pressure on social media, I don't know how she does that because people are so ruthless and literally get to say whatever they want hiding behind a screen. And that's one thing that I think we all gained from Dance Moms. We all have such thick skin. Like we can handle and take whatever anybody says about us because we know they're just hiding behind a screen. Um, I love it for her. Like she's, she's always been the one to take a risk and to do something that normal other people wouldn't do. And she's getting views. Like she has so much love. She has so much hate, but she doesn't care. Like she just is herself and she's just trying to put out music and kind of change her bows to a more like mature version of herself. Cause she got a lot out of her Jojo with the Bobo era. Like, a lot happened in that era. And I think now that she's much older and way more mature, like it's her life. She's not tied down to Nickelodeon anymore. She's not tied down to the bows anymore. And I think she's been wanting this shift for a while because I think I saw an interview, like she's had this plan since her 18th birthday or since she turned 18, like she wanted to make this shift and she's been planning out every single step of this for a few Mm -hmm. years. And now it's finally coming to life. Yeah. I I mean, Riley and I said basically the same thing that I think maybe she's aggressively trying to like show everyone she's moving on. She's giving like Miley Cyrus energy in a sense of like, I'm not that anymore. And I think as she continues to mature, she'll like level out with yeah. maybe like, but people are so mean to her. It literally is so sad. I know. And like I said, like I give her so much credit for dealing with that 
because she could like lash out on them and like comment back and say whatever she wants to say, but she doesn't because like they're just haters and they're just jealous. And I always, yeah. anytime someone hates, I'm like, it's just jealousy. That's, that's how I see it. Yeah. Like why, what does it benefit someone to just hate on her behind, you know what I mean? Like what, what's the benefit if you really don't care? Right. Like, let her do her life. It's not affecting you. I promise. Right. It's our life. And she's a 20 year old girl. Like we were all weird when we were 20 and like, you know, like just let her be herself. And I don't know. I'm just proud of her for going for it and having no shame in who she is, which she shouldn't. And haters are always going to hate. Yep. Truth. Okay. Um, next question. Who picked this guy? <laughs> what do you feel as far as your relationships with the girls from the show? Everyone is so different, but you have gone through so much together. How's that bonded you to one another for life? Oh God. I mean, we all grew up together. Like we were with each other 24 seven, all of our personalities, we're different, but the same because we spent every waking day together. We matured together. We went through puberty on national television together. Like we only had each other. We didn't have friends to like go home to at night and hang out with and go to football games with. It was us. It was those mm -hmm. six or seven girls or whoever was on the show at the time. That's all we had. And that's how we got through everything we would distract ourselves by like having sleepovers and building forts on the bus and playing games mm -hmm. when we weren't filming, we were still together because they were like my comfort people. They were who could make me smile after a really hard day. And they're who I could go to if Abby just yelled at me, or if I was on the bottom of the pyramid again, because they understood mm -hmm. everything that I was feeling because they also went through it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really great answer. When you said bus, all I could think of steady on the road, <laughs> steady on the road. <laughs> okay. Wait, I have a question on that. Is it so, what is the feeling of opening up your TikTok and just like reliving old clips or seeing things like that? It's probably so weird. I see edits of mom all <laughs> the time in her damn cowboy hat. Like <laughs> throwing the jazz shoe at Abby saying, I'm not Becky, how Mecky? Like I see that clip so often. I'll see memes of Abby biting at Kelly's finger all the time. I'll see videos of me dancing or like when we forgot our dances, like the costume malfunctions. I think it's so crazy how Dance Moms ended however many years ago. And it's kind of having like a resurgence on TikTok and like people are rewatching it now like years and years and years later, it's just crazy mm -hmm. that it's like coming back around. Yeah. I think COVID really amped up dance moms because everybody was stuck in their houses and they were like, Oh, dance moms. Like I'm going to watch the mm -hmm. show. And I think now that we've announced the reunions coming out, like everybody's going back and watching the show and starting at season one and finishing it because they want to watch it before the reunion comes out. So yeah, it's crazy how relevant it still is. Like, whew, let's let it go. <laughs> God <laughs> Wait, I think we forgot to say, when does the reunion come out? I think it's like a week from oh when this episode airs right now. It comes out in nine days. <laughs> nine days from today. May 1st. So less than that from when this airs. So are you watching it with the girls? Like where how, have you planned out how you're watching it? I think my roommates and I are probably just going to watch it on the couch. I'm terrified. To say the least. Why are you terrified? Um, just <laughs> reality TV, <laughs> they can be sneaky. They, yeah. they can edit you to say something that you didn't even say. And that's yeah. why I'm scared because there wasn't drama on the reunion and dance moms fed off of drama. And so I'm scared that they're going to edit someone to say something that didn't even correlate to the conversation that we had. Because when the trailer came out, I literally called Riley and I was like, Riley, do I look like a bitch in this scene? And it was when Jojo was saying something about them leaving or about her leaving. And I turned to her and I said, then why did you leave that? I don't think that conversation ever happened. I said that to someone else in a completely different conversation, but Ugh. it looks like I was responding to Jojo. 
Mm-hmm. And that's like my only fear because like they have the full, they have the full throttle on it. They can do whatever they want with it, but they also I feel don't like see the cut of it before it airs. Like we're watching it with everybody else. I feel like that's bringing up past trauma too, from when you were filming dance moms and you like, I don't, you probably didn't watch every episode, but like when you did watch, you're like, wait, that didn't happen. Or like, mom didn't say that. Yeah. And it's just like, shows you how insane like reality TV and producers and like mm-hmm. manipulative. So yeah. I mean, I even like our uh, five seconds of reality, Riley, I even was like, what, the, like seeing that it's so crazy and it's a shame that the public eye, like obviously <laughs> the girls on. <laughs> oh my God. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> the way that came through my headphones, I literally. <laughs> kind of, why did you scream? Why did you sneeze into the camera? Oh, sorry. I have really bad allergies right now. <laughs> I, my heart is literally in my asshole. Sorry. That scared me so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why did that nose blow sound like a mouse? <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. Kendall, are you okay? Do you need Zyrtec? No, I'm okay. Oh my God. OMG. <laughs> I'm Sorry, clammy. <laughs> wow. Jump scare. Sorry to anyone <laughs> listening in their car. Hopefully, you didn't crash. <laughs> quit it oh my gosh I don't even recall what I was even saying um, oh you were saying when you guys were on so sharp (laughs) oh yeah I just think it's it is wild how oh I know what I was gonna say it's a shame that the like normal person for lack of better words watching and consuming this content doesn't have like a lot of them don't have the capability of realizing what that that's happening. So they think like, oh, Kendall said that directly to Jojo, for example. But at least between the girls on the cast of Dance Moms, you guys all know better. You were there live. But I wish people consuming reality TV kind of knew you have to take it all with a grain of salt. You really do. And I hate, well, a lot of people's perception of reality TV, they think it's this lavish lifestyle that we get to live and we make so much money from it and we get to travel. Like you shouldn't hate that you get to go travel around the world and you get to film a TV show. I would love for somebody to be in the position that I was in and have to go through what we were all going through because it's so mentally and physically hard and it's not lavish whatsoever. I We had to leave our families at home. I didn't get to go to school. I understand I got to live in California and film a TV show. And I got all these amazing opportunities. But I also sacrificed my childhood for mm-hmm. a TV show. And I just wish that people realized actually how hard it was on us and how much we have to still deal with it to this day. And we'll have to deal with it for the rest of our lives. Like, When someone says something that I'm like, oh my God, you just brought me back to a memory that I like forgot even happened. It's crazy. It's so wild. I feel like no one will ever truly understand, but I think that the haters and the keyboard warriors behind the keyboards, like saying rude things just need to like take a chill pill and realize like you guys are just so strong for going through that I don't know how else to describe it yeah well we'll be cheering you on when you when it airs I'm excited to see it I gotta tune in so how long is it um we filmed it in November and I was like hey guys I'm about to I missed nationals choreography to film Riley told me for palm for palm I the winning dance And was in Palm as an alternate because I wasn't there to learn it. So someone else learned my spot and we basically had to like compete for that spot in Palm. But besides the fact, we went down for like maybe three or four days and we shot for like eight or nine hours for two days straight. And so I think it might be a two hour special or a one hour special I know it's not going to be like multiple episodes. It's mm-hmm. one episode. I don't know how long it's going to be because there is a shit ton of content, but 
they haven't really told us anything. So, and for people who want to watch, what is it airing on? I don't. I didn't even think I asked you. It's airing on Lifetime. The oh, it is on Lifetime still. Okay. Yeah. So it'll air on Lifetime, and then I think they have a deal with Disney Plus. So I think once it airs, people can go back and watch it on Disney Plus because I think okay. that Dance Moms is right now. Mm-hmm. I think that makes sense. Got it. <clears throat> okay. We're really grilling you. We just have a couple more Q and a questions and then we can get into the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, we kind of touched on this, but how do you balance living, living a normal life as a college student and also the life of a public figure? Um, it's definitely taught me a lot of time management (laughs) in college, having to juggle school and dance team on top of being like an influencer and having to film content constantly. I prioritize myself over all of that because I don't want to get caught up in the social media life or getting too hard on myself about school. I try to find a happy medium between both. And obviously nobody's perfect. I struggled a lot with social media when I came here. I was like, you know what? I'm at college. I want to take a break. I wasn't really on TikTok. I obviously don't do YouTube anymore. I just wanted to like enjoy freshman year and kind of cut all of that out. But I found a very good routine and like if companies come and they're like, Hey, we post this and I like it and it's easy. I'll do that. But if it's something that is going to take too much time, I have to tell them like, Hey, I'm still in college. I have a lot going on. I can do this for you at a later time, but right now is not great. So I've kind of figured out what works best for me. And I also have to protect my brand. Like if certain companies reach out, I'm like, no, like my viewers don't really adhere to your type of brand or your mm-hmm. content or whatever you're selling. So yeah. Did I answer? I feel question? like you do a great job. Yeah, no, for sure. I think, I think from the outside looking in, like watching your stuff, it seems like you have, like you have a great relationship, you have friends, you have a dance team, you still have a social life, but you also still do like you go on brand trip or like you went to the Super Bowl with yeah. Maybelline or whatever. Like, I feel like, mm-hmm you do a great job balancing it. And so, um, I love that you also have fun while you're young and don't just like work, work, work because you have the rest of your life to do that. Right. Exactly. And I try to be as raw as possible. I don't like only showing the good side of life. Like uh, most of my TikToks that I film, I messy bun pajamas, like no makeup. And I think, that's like when I love posting the most is when I can just be myself. Because like I said, people didn't get to see who I was on dance moms. They saw eight year old me crying every day. And now <laughs> I finally get to show them who I am through TikTok and Instagram and Snapchat. So I like to be as normal and as raw as possible while still showing like, Oh, I'm at the Super Bowl with a makeup company. Cause that's freaking awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love your TikToks because I feel like people get to see like the funny, hilarious, silly side of you, like your little comments. It's just like, like you said, you like showing who you are because people didn't get to see that on Dance Moms. And I also think that you do a great job of setting boundaries, like you said, of working with some brands, but also like saying no, like you don't have to do every, everything that a brand wants you to do. Like you can say no and still have your normal Mm -hmm. life. So what do you think your plan is post-college? Do you have any like visions or dreams for what you want to do? Oof, that's a, that's a good question, right? <laughs> I had no idea what I want to do after college. So it's okay if you have no idea. Yeah. I mean, same. when I tell people I'm studying political science in Prila, they're like, oh my God, what law school are you going to? Let me stop me there, cowboy. <laughs> I am definitely not going to law school anymore. I debated it at first, but school is just not, a Vertez thing. Like, obviously we get good grades. We get by, we graduate, we get our diplomas, we get our degrees, but I cannot picture myself going to four more years of school. That is just not something that I want to do. So I don't know. I mean, I feel like I have a really good grasp on marketing and Mm -hmm. advertising and not sure why I didn't study that in college, but (laughs) that's besides the fact So I don't know. I'm just going to roll with the punches. I'll see if companies will take me seriously and I could get like a corporate job or an advertising or marketing job. But I definitely don't just want to sit on my butt because I'm young. Like I want to go to a nine to five. I want to experience the hardships of life, you know, (laughs) give it a good old college try. At least say you did it. And then if you don't love it, 
Yeah. I just don't want to be that person who falls back on influencing because first of all, I don't want to be considered an influencer. And I know I guess I am at this point, but I don't want to be that person that's like, Oh, I quit my full-time job to be a full-time content creator. Like, yes, it's awesome. And there's great money in it, but I also want to have something that I'm passionate about. And I want to Mm -hmm. like do that in the morning and then I can post content at night. Cause like you can post content for the rest of your life, but you, I don't know. No, No, I, I get what you're trying to say. Like it's hard to find like, and there, I'm sure there are people who are, but it is hard to find a true passion when you're an influencer and working with different brands, like, and, and it's a very black and white, like transaction versus mm-hmm. if you're invested into a job that gives you fulfillment or passion. I, I feel like that's kind of what you're trying to say. Yeah. Like I've been working since I was basically eight years old. Like I considered <laughs> dance moms as my first job because it was a job. It was. We literally were oh, filming yeah. in the same building every single day getting a paycheck. Like I consider that as a job. And so like when I have nothing on my agenda, I don't know what to do with myself. And that's when I start going crazy on TikTok and I post the most outrageous videos of me because I'm like, all right, I don't have anything to do. Let me go embarrass myself on social media. So. Kendall, I have to tell you the, my favorite TikTok you've ever made. I swear I bring it up to Riley all the time. I don't know why I think it's so funny. It's the one when you, it's Steve Harvey and you have the mustache and you go sit on it and you jump and it's my favorite video in the I entire world. That. I forgot about that video. Can we post it it's, on Drinks on Us Story? Yes. Yeah. It's my favorite. It is yeah. the best. That is a good video. Mom loved it. Mom loves that video. Well, I think the reason I found it is Riley like sent the group chat reaction in, and your dad was like, love it, Kay. Like, yes, he did. He was like, love it, like, Kay. It was like an extremely inappropriate TikTok and Kendall sent it to our family group chat. And my dad's such an angel. He's like, love it, Kay. You're doing great, Love the passion. <laughs> Well, Kay, I think that you have some really great goals after college. And also, Mm -hmm. can we normalize changing your mind like throughout school? Like you're not supposed to know exactly what you want to do your freshman year. So like, I love that you've kind of tested the waters and you know what you don't want and you know what you do want. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I know I'm not alone. Like I know a lot of people are going through what I'm going through and they don't know what they want to do and they don't have that passion yet. And that's fine. Like that is completely fine. And I'm trying to tell myself that like, you don't need to know what you do. Even after you graduate, go home, be with your family, enjoy summer, like travel because you're only this age once. Like I'm only going to be 21 for a few more months. Crazy. And then it's time to get a job or time to, you know, get an apartment and move out. So I'm just going to take it day by day. I'm free bird. Yo, (laughs) That is your nickname. Wait, I never said yo. I just sounded like Jesse Pinkman. <laughs> Not Freebird yo. I love Freebird the energy. Yo. I'm Freebird yo. Let's make that the episode title. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is our last question for you. What is one thing that we wouldn't know that happened behind the scenes of Dance Moms? Give us some tea. I'm trying to think. That's a great question. I don't think anybody's ever really asked us that. (laughs) Um, I mean, I'll tell you the time when mom and I were like getting interviewed to be on Dance Moms. Um, I think she could tell the story way better than me because I was obviously seven or eight. But we got in touch with Abby. We drove down to Penn Hills, which is where the studio was. And we first met her at the Donut Connection, which was right next to the studio. <laughs> okay. And Sorry. I, can't remember funny. This, I just know we met at the Donut Connection. And we had breakfast or whatever. She probably had a few donuts. <laughs> and we get back to the oh it, was like, it was like Saturday or Sunday. So nobody was really in the studio. And she wanted to like kind of walk us around and show us the, the rooms or whatever. And we're sitting in the den and she's talking to my mom. I'm kind of just standing there behind her because I'm petrified. This Aww. is my dance teacher. And I'm like, oh my God, this is really scary. Like, where's Tammy Croft at? And <laughs> she takes her shirt off and boobs are just like 
He's like talking to mom with her arms and like her bra is just like, ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. <laughs> yes, oh, this is so hey, graphic. And so I hand her the shoe box. She opens it. It's the biggest, chunkiest, like necklaces, earrings, rings, jo- like all of this jewelry just piled in the shoe box. And she's like, everything's flying. Boobs are out. Like <laughs> hair is in a messy bun or whatever. And mom and her having like a corporate conversation. Like she's trying to get us to come to the studio. And obviously mom is like, Hey, like, or whatever you say, Abby. So that was kind of my first memory of Abby. And I mean, that doesn't explain our relationship. I don't really know what does, but it sounds traumatic. Yeah. I, I can see why I don't really remember much of it. Cause I probably tried to erase that from my memory. <laughs> Oh my but god! I love that your flying. first <laughs> your first memory of Abby is her boobs. Ba bum ba bum. Oh, another really funny memory, which actually I told ABC yesterday. Um, when we would travel with Abby, like she always wanted us to look picture perfect. Like we had to wear the matching sweatsuits, we had to have our hair up, we had to have a bow, and we had to have makeup on. And so we're traveling in this airport. It's super early. Like obviously we're all exhausted. We just want to get home, and we're on the walking. The, the you get on the thing and it just goes in the airport yeah mm-hmm. you know the yeah. walking yeah. runway um and she's facing us but she's moving backwards and like we're <laughs> and, the story. and she's yelling at us you guys don't look like a professional dance team you don't have bows in your hair no one has a lick of makeup on where are your earrings blah 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 just yelling and yelling and yelling all of a sudden it ends she just <laughs> goes flying feet up in the air but she <laughs> lands on the walkway so she's rolling everybody's oh. backing up so we're not tripping over her and like the suitcases are like bumping into oh. her everybody's like jumping over because she can't get up like the, the thing is still rolling under her <laughs> and so we finally get her up she runs away the medics come they're like where was that woman that just fell like we need to make sure she's okay and christy's like oh you'll probably find her at the food court here she is at the food court with a big diet coke i think she was eating like panda express or something and like oh. it's just ironic that like christy obviously said that as a joke but the fact that they actually went to the food court and found her there <laughs> like just the funniest the funniest oh my gosh we Wait, need to pull the that pittsburgh found airport out, <laughs> that's when we found out karma was real like she was literally yelling at us for not having a bow in our hair and then she backed up the walkway. Like, wait, Kendall, you told that story to ABC. Are they going to air it? It's funny. <laughs> um, I'm just oh, imagining man. her rolling, rolling, rolling. Wait, and no one wanted to warn her that the walkway was ending. <laughs> I don't think so. I really don't. I think the moms were just standing there, like, keep going, keep going. Oh my gosh, that is too good. Yeah, that was, that oh was my gosh. Brain. I can only imagine the stories that you girls have. I mean, if anything, mom, uh, we were so yeah. young. Like mom remembers all of these stories. So you have to get her on the pod again. We'll get y'all on the pod. She was funny. You yeah, should get dad. Was. You guys should do a podcast with your dads, dance dads. That oh, would that'd be, be so funny. cute. Yeah. Prop dads. They were the OG prop dads. Prop dads. <laughs> Okay, KK, we have a quick little like fun segment that we want to do with you to, you know, get the viewers to know you a little more. So it's going to be like a this or that segment, just okay. rapid fire. Okay, are you ready? Sure. Okay, this or that. Girls night in or girls night out? Out. In. Wine. <laughs> what? You can't change it. 50-50. <laughs> okay. Wine or tequila? Tequila. Dance studio or dance team? Studio. What? What? <laughs> Team. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why did you say studio? I thought you loved dance team. I do love dance team, but... Wait, I'm confused by the question. Do I like being on a dance team or did I like being at a dance studio better? Yeah, that's so you're saying you liked the dance studio, studio vibe. Okay. Oh my God. 100%. Sorry. Okay, ready? <laughs> I think this might be a hard one for you. These Football or basketball? <sighs> Football. Okay. Heels or tennis shoes? Tennis shoes. Colors or neutrals? Uh, colors. Book or movie? 
movie. <laughs> Clean girl aesthetic or mob wife? So I'm trying to be mob wife and I'm trying to be clean girl and neither are working for me. So, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go Own your aesthetic. <laughs> okay. Last one. Spotlight or private? Wait, what does that mean? Like, would you rather be in the spotlight or live a private oh, life? You're talking about the Snapchat things. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's giving young. Um, uh, private. Wait, I guys, I really have something in my eye. Okay, get it out. Okay, while you're getting that out of your eye, um, we're going to move on to our girls' room segment. So this is an advice segment where viewers write in and we just give them advice. So we're going to do three submissions today with Kendall K. And Yay. I think you're going to give really good advice, K. Oh, God. Okay, <laughs> submission number one. Advice they want to hear. <laughs> That's okay. That's you're okay. our honest queen. I am honest. Weak. Okay, ready? Yeah. Girls, love the pod. You seem to have good relationships with your sibling in laws. So, wondering if I'm justified or being dramatic. My sis in law got married recently and she just got her pictures back today. When she posted them on socials, she cut me out of all but one and didn't even post any with my partner, who is her little brother. However, she did post with her older brother. I think she did it because my partner and I don't fit her online aesthetic. And I'm really hurt that we were the only ones excluded. So, bitch, when you get married, cut her out. <laughs> i love that energy rose, rose i think we can i think we can agree on this one is that something riley would do to me or charlotte i'm i don't think you think oh my god this is totally something riley would do for to fit her aesthetic okay we were on facetime <laughs> last night when i was picking the girls room submissions and i read this one to kendall and she's like wait that is so something you would do because Rose, you know, we're like all about the aesthetic, but yeah. I, here's the thing. I, would, I wouldn't cut out my family, like to this person, I am sick that that is the type of person that would no, do no, that. No. Like, you know, I mean, I would obviously be upset, but at the same time, like I understand it's your wedding <laughs> photos. Like <laughs> if I don't fit your aesthetic, that's fine. You can cut me out. But at yeah. least text me and be like, hey, like, if you notice that I cut you out of this photo, it's just because I didn't like the way you looked in it. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like if you're going to go to the lengths of cutting someone out of a photo, just use a different photo. Oh, like, right. you can't That's what cut I someone feel. like that is yeah. not OK, especially someone that you're that close with. Like, right. I hope that they can be honest with you and be like, hey, I'm going to cut you out of this photo because I. <laughs> couldn't find another good one or just yeah. use a different photo. Yeah. I'd like to know a little bit more. Like I'm imagining like a carousel, like 10 picture posts. Like yeah. Yeah. all that matters is like, I'm sure the first one she posted was just her and her husband. So like when you're swiping, like did she cut you out because you just didn't fit in the frame or did she intentionally cut you out? But if she did intentionally cut you out, I feel like just don't use the picture. Like why are you yeah. unnecessary family drama starting? I think there needs yeah. to be intervention. I think yeah, you're maybe. justified, but also like, I don't think there's really anything you can do. It's not like she's going to repost the carousel. You know, okay. I feel like it's just, it's kind of a weird, I don't know. Or, yeah. or you call her out and you post the photo that she cut you out of on your story. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> honestly like, an option. Oh my God. Yeah. I love this photo. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you could just simply ask, be like, dang, didn't make the cut, sis. Like, I like make it, make her answer before you assume the worst. Maybe just be like, dang, I didn't make the cut. I see how it is. I don't know. Yeah. Wait, Rose, that's good. And see like, what jokingly, kind of response. Like, yeah. We call her out. Joking like, with a little out. truth. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Okay. Let us All know right. how it goes. If this happened between me and Riley and Charlotte, I'd be like, Charlotte, you looked ugly. Like, <laughs> No, that's the thing about Kendall. You're saying this is something I would do. This is something that you would do to your older um, sisters. Yeah. Now that I think about the situation, totally something that I would do. <laughs> not to, not in like spite of anybody, but yeah. I just want but my to me. I feel like Kendall, you would post the one you liked most first, and then I feel like you don't really care after that. Like if you're just like, thanks, Rose. All right. A picture. I feel the same way with you, Riley. Like you only really care about that first photo once you for swipe. The aesthetic, it's like, yeah, yeah, for like how it fits on your feed. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I think we need a little more context, but I say give her a little call out, see how give it goes. Her hey, sis. 
<laughs> hey sis yeah let us know um send an update if you do call her out because i'm very curious Mm-hmm. Okay. Next question. Would love y'all's advice on online dating. I am 23 and am surrounded by friends in serious relationships. I would love to meet someone and find my person and enter that phase of my life. But meeting people organically is hard and online dating is even harder. What are your tips? Thanks so much. Love y'all lots. Um, I mean, I met Andrew on Instagram. That's how we found each other. He literally popped up on my explore page. And I saw that he was at Georgetown University. I was like, hmm, that sounds like it could be close to here. And it was. It was literally two hours from me. And I followed him. He followed me back. We started DMing. And then I drove down to go meet him. But I have heard some horror stories of, like, being on dating apps and, you know, the date's not going well. But I don't know. Have you guys ever been on a date? Rose and I don't have a lot of experience with dating apps and cause we both met Ryan and Kate in college, like in person, but Kendall, that is a great story. Mm-hmm. Like you and Andrew have such a great relationship. You've been together for so long and you literally met on Instagram. Yeah. So what would you recommend to this person? I mean, I think, I think meeting on social media has gotten such a bad rep these past few years, just yeah. because of all the horror stories. Like we only hear about the bad dates and the bad experiences and the crazy boys and all the red flags. But there is like the good side of social media, like people, so many people can connect through social media and it doesn't have to just be in person. Like, Mm -hmm. and Andrew, he came out of nowhere. Like I wasn't even looking for a boyfriend. He just popped up. I thought he was cute. I followed him and it just happened. So like, don't be upset if you don't find anybody IRL. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, love that, Rose. That's something we can start using. I I gotta write these down. I gotta write (laughs) these down. Um, Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, take a risk. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But now you have a good story for the plot. For the plot. Also, when you say take a risk, I do want to mention, like, when you were driving to meet Andrew for the first time, like, if this person's going to do that, make sure you're telling your friends where you're going, who you're going to be with, share your location. Just because sometimes, like, people can be a little sketch. You never know. Oh yeah. yeah. And I obviously like before I drove down, we FaceTimed every night. It's so, like, yeah, I was able to see you knew what you were walking into, what he looked like, how he interacted with me. Right. Like, I definitely didn't rush that in that sense because then I told mom and she was like, Oh God, <laughs> let me know when you get there. Please call me. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like use your judgment. Like if you are connecting with someone on social media, like make sure you see that they're like following other people and that they maybe like post, you know, I know people can like quote unquote catfish, but like I'm sure with Andrew Kendall, you saw like he was posting with friends and he has family, like use your better judgment. And I think to Kendall's point, there are good fish in the sea, but if you are trying to do anything in person, like do things that you love, like whether it's at the gym grocery shopping. Um, I don't know, even out at a bar, like just, you have to be bold and just who cares? Like if you're making a connection with someone, maybe just connect with them on social media. Like don't make it weird. It's not only weird. I feel like if you make it weird. Yeah. Yeah. Is that where Shane and Leah met literally at the grocery store? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So success story about grocery stores, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, they're now married, but they met in the produce aisle at Kroger. So you never know. Next time you're going grocery shopping, you can meet your husband. At Kroger. That's crazy. I did not know that. (laughs) Yeah. Shane, it's so crazy. Shane texted me and Kate in a group and he was like, I just saw the most beautiful girl in my life at the grocery store. And then he went back the same time the next week and he texted us. He's like, she's here again. He's like, she's in the frozen aisle. Where, when should I go up to her? Like, it's just so crazy that it happened like that. Mm -hmm. And now they're having a baby. A baby. Literally. Wow. See, look at these success stories. Yeah. Okay. Next question or next submission. Sorry. Need advice on my boyfriend's parents. For context, we have been together for two years. They live five minutes from me, so we see them pretty frequently. But there's one thing that's been bothering me. They've never once asked me anything about myself, not about my job, my family, my life, etc. Do you guys find that weird? I love his family and we get along great, but I just find it odd that they've never taken the time to really get to know me. I've intentionally asked them about their jobs and I have tried to find a genuine interest in their lives because it's important to me that I'm close with my significant other family since my personal family situation isn't the greatest. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I'm dating their son. Why wouldn't they care to ask these things help? So hmm. one, I definitely think that's a red flag. Like 
I would be upset if my boyfriend, if Andrew's family didn't like me and didn't care to get to know me because I'm dating your son. Like, wouldn't you want to know who he's dating? But I also Mm -hmm. potentially see this as he's a mama's boy and the mom feels threatened by the girlfriend. And so without even knowing, she's just not even trying to gain a relationship with the girlfriend. Yeah. Like let her in at all. Because mama's boys, whoof, get out. (laughs) That's a bad relationship to be in. Get out. No, we always say boy moms are, it can be a little cuckoo. (laughs) Yeah. But I I would say it, I, I think you're justified. Like it is weird, especially if you've been together for a long time, like you want a good relationship with his family and it takes two to tango. Like they need to put in the effort just as much as you. What if you like, invite his mom to go shopping one day or help you pick something for your house or get coffee just to like initiate that like one-on-one time. Um, and then from there, hopefully it can spiral. I don't know. That would be my advice. Yeah. I love that. Right. That's a good, and, and if it doesn't progress and you still feel like it's, we're talking about the boyfriend the whole time or whatever the case may be, maybe then you have to like look internally, like, is this, does this have legs or, or not? Um, cause I do think that's weird. Mm-hmm. Like you'd think, I don't, I, to, to Kendall and Riley's point, I think there, there's gotta be something to that. Like, does this, does your boyfriend have siblings? Like, is this how it's working with all relationships? Yeah. Um, have you talked to your boyfriend about it? Yeah. I would like maybe, right. yeah, maybe do some internal work and in digging because, if you want to have a good relationship with them, like something's got to give. Yeah. And if, if nothing's going to give, unfortunately it might not be your, your winner. Yeah. Well, let us know if this progresses or like what you decide to do, because I'm very intrigued. Trouble in paradise. We have a new <laughs> bombshell coming in. Wait, what's that sound? Hot new bombshell enters the villa. Oh yeah. Love Love that and, is that your show, right? What? No, that's not Love is Blind. No. Wait, Kendall, did you watch Love is Blind? No. What is that? Oh, girls. Girl, I'm over reality TV. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Fair. That's Fair. True. I'm watching reality TV. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that concludes our happy hour. Thank you so much, KK, for spending this last hour with us. We had so much fun. We learned some new slang. You're keeping us young, girl. <laughs> Yay. That is Botox. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Called out. That's what little sisters are for. I was going to say the same thing. Well, I loved it, Kendall. I feel like we, I feel like I knew you since the womb. So it's fun to see you growing to where you are. So we are so happy you spent time with us. I hope the audience got to know you more to your core and how fun and free bird yo you are. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you guys for having me. This is literally the second podcast I've ever done. So I, wow, we're honored. I we know. Are so honored. I've never done a podcast with like a legit company until you guys. Legit. Aw, thanks else. for telling us we're a legit company. Hell yeah, you are. Yo. Aw. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Don't haunt me. Oh my gosh. Well, thank Yay. you, KK. It was so much fun. Love you. Of course. Cheers. 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 Love you guys. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Drinks on Us. We hope you had as much fun as we did. As always, feel free to like, subscribe, share, give us a review, and share this podcast with your friends and fam. Yes, thank you so much, and thank you to our special guest. Um, I hope you guys tune in, give Kendall some love, and hope you guys just loved hearing the side of her. So I'm going to just toast to... Should I just toast to Kendall? Freebird Yo? Let's toast to Freebird Yo. (laughs) Free bird yo, and as always, we will see you same time, same place next week. Love ya. Love ya. Bye.